Hi, <clears throat> we're going to be using the ID web editor for OpenStreetMap and what we're going to do is we're going to look at how the ID web editor handles tags and tags are information that you put on objects um, so that we know more about those objects. So ID lets you do a fair amount with tags but it's not very intuitive. So hopefully I can explain and show you how ID uses tags and it'll be a little bit clearer to you so you can improve your tagging with ID and make the data that you generate that much more useful. So the I have a task out of the task manager already and this task is supposed to find residential areas, roads, and waterways. So I looked at the aerial imagery and I found a residential area so I'm going to need to outline this residential area and mark it as residential. So I'm going to go ahead and get the area tool and I'm just going to sort of you know quickly do an outline around this residential area and you, go, you keep it kind of tight Yeah, you keep it kind of tight. Now, as soon as you're done drawing an area, this is the tag, this is the interface that ID has for adding tags. And really the most important thing to notice right off the bat is that these some of these items have like a sub menu that goes with them, and that's indicated by these this staffed effect here up at the top. So water has sub items and that's why it looks like it's stacked building has sub items and that's why it looks like it's stacked and land use has sub items and that's why it has this stack deck effect here and if I click on any one of these you know the red it's gonna push everything down and the options for land use are gonna come up if I clicked on building it would push everything down and then the suggested values for building would would come up these park and hospital grounds and place of worship they don't have any of that stacked effect so they would just it would put the tags that it wants to put on there and you might might let you configure them a little bit but there's really not much you know this probably makes it park equals yes or something and hospital grounds equals yes or something like that but water building and land use I'm going to pick one of these and then I'm going to have to pick something from the subcategory. So I'm going to say land use. And you can see it pushed everything down. You know, I still have building, water, park, and all that, but it got pushed down. And if you notice, you can see it's sort of indented here. You know, it's supposed to be sub items of land use. So that's why these are kind of indented. You know, they're supposed to be child options from the parent of land use. And in reality, land use is what we call the key. And then residential, industrial, commercial, any one of these would be what we call the value. Tags are always made up of a key and a value. And they're kind of arbitrary, but, you know, there's some that we use all the time. Like land use is a super common key. And then the values are pretty common too, like residential, industrial, commercial. So I'm going to go ahead and select residential. That's what we're supposed to mark these as, residential. And so now it kind of, there's some additional options that I could give it. And these would be putting more tags on it. And these, it would be putting more keys. If I click on any one of these, it's going to put in a tag with a key. And then it's going to let me fill in the value. So I could put in name as the key. I could type in the value if I knew the name of this area, which we don't do that very often. But for example, I could put, here's source. So it's filled in the key called source, and I'm going to type in the value, which is Bing, because I, I can, using the Bing imagery. And then you'll see down here, I don't know if I made that clear, but I, you know, I clicked on the arrow to turn down and show me the two tags. This is kind of the advanced interface to tagging what is selected. It tells me the, the key is land use, has a value of residential. Key is source, has a value of Bing. And if I clicked on this plus here, I could add additional key value pairs, which is what we call tagging. So I can either use sort of the, you know, suggested tags, keys and values, or I could just arbitrarily put in my own. So
So I'm going to just click on this to see how I would add an additional tag to this, an additional key value pair. So I clicked on it, and it's a freeform field. I could type in anything I want. It comes up with some suggested keys, and you tend to want to use suggested keys because if everybody's tagging things using the same sort of strategy, then people who use this data can count on things being a certain way. But if for some odd reason the you know the key that you wanted to use wasn't here, you could just type in your own. And you know there's a key that we use often. We don't really need it here, but I'm just going to use it for example. But there's a key that we use often that I don't see in the suggested list of keys, and that key is fix me, F-I-X-M-E. And you can see it fills it in as I type it. It's heard of this, it's heard of this, this key before. So, and fix me is going to put a little flag on this so that it means somebody should look at it. There's something that you know you're we're about to tell it. You know we're about to to this is the key we're about to put in the value. And so it has suggested values, which I've never seen before. Um, incomplete. Continue. You often, if you're doing roads or rivers and you get to the edge of your square, you'll often click on the very last node of the road or the very last road node of the river, and you'll give it a tag that says, Fix me, continue. And that means whoever finds that who's working on another task that has more of the area in it or they're working on the task next to yours they're gonna see that fix me equal continue tag and they're gonna say oh well, I should continue this road in my square so that gets used a lot it doesn't apply to our residential area because there's nothing to continue um, and it's not incomplete you know so I mean we're just putting fix me on here but just for illustration purposes but you could say you know fix me confirm residential we would never do this because we're just tagging man-made structures as residential areas but you know here's an example of you could maybe if you were tagging something as farmland or industrial because that was and you just weren't quite sure but the task wanted you to identify industrial areas or a cemetery or an airport um, and it looked like it to you you were pretty sure it was so you went ahead and you defined that area and put you know land use or actually cemeteries are amenity equals cemetery or graveyard but you weren't 100 percent sure you might put also put a fix me tag on there so we're just going to say you know fix me confirm residential and now when you click on this you'll see it shows you if you hover over it, it shows you the tags that it has, but if you click on it, then it gives you the edit interface for those tags. So I'm going to take this off, you know what I mean? Because we're not going to say confirm residential. So I'm just going to, this is the trash can icon. So I'm just going to take this tag off and I'm going to leave those two tags on there. So this is properly tagged now. The area is set to residential and I put a source on there that says Bing, but that was totally optional. You wouldn't have had to do that at all. So I just want to show you one other quick thing here. I don't think, unfortunately, I don't see another residential area right here. So we're just going to pretend, just for illustration purposes, I'm going to pretend that there's another residential area right here. So I'm going to draw another area. And we're going to pretend this is a residential area. Now I want you to look over here. You can see this looks a lot like what we did before, what we had before for options with this first one that we drew. Land use, building, water, park. Land use is still has multiple options under it. Building still has the stacked effect. Water still has the stacked effect. But look, now we have this one up here that says residential. And that's because that's what we got done doing here. So ID will remember tagging that you've done in the past and start putting them up above all everything else in the list. So I could still click on land use and select one of these items. I could even make it, you know, residential and go through the same process we just went through. Um, clicking this opens and closes it. 
So I could still click on any one of those, but I don't need to because this remembers the tag that I last, the last one that I used, land use equals residential. So now every time I come back here and draw an area, it's going to have this one up at the top. And you'll see that it basically will do the same thing. I'm going to undo these. I'm going to get rid of that one. I'm going to get rid of that one, and I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm going to quickly, I'm going to quickly outline this building. And again, you always want to draw them as square as you possibly can because that sort of helps you see what it is that you're doing. Because most buildings are square unless they're round. They're usually made up of rectangles or they're round. So you want to try and make them as square as possible. And you can see it gives me the same tagging options because I just got done drawing an area. So I could do land use and you know whatever I want. This is a building, so we're not talking about land use. We're talking about buildings. And generally when you're doing buildings, you're going to say building, you know, this could be a house. I have no idea because I'm looking at it from you know, 50,000 feet or however high. So I don't know whether it's a house or an apartment or a commercial building or whatever, or even a residential building. But, you know, I do know it's a building. And so this is a little bit confusing, but we're going to specify that it's a building. And then we're just going to pick building again, because this is just a generic building. I can't be at this point in time from this imagery. I can't be any more specific about what kind of a building this is. So I'm going to select a building building and that basically if, if you come here and look at all tags that basically gives it a key value pair of building equals yes and that's just the most generic building you can make and you could put all this other stuff on here if you wanted to but we never do because we never have that information but when you're doing buildings you know you select the first time you do it you select building and then that pops down all your options and then you click on building again and that just gives it the most generic building equals yes tag and that's it and then the last step for doing a building is clicking on it and then squaring the corners which I do by typing the S key and that squares up my corners um, you know you might look and make sure it's properly placed but so now if we draw another building we'll just draw another building why not we'll just draw another circle I guess um, you can click on this and say make this a circle and now it'll make it a circle for me great and just like we did with residential area or just like ID did with residential area it's remembering things that I've tagged recently so now I don't have to go through the building building process again it remembers that I've used this building tag before so I can just click on building and it'll automatically give it the building equal yes. And that one's done. And of course, there's nothing to square because this is round. Um, the only other thing that I'll mention about tagging is generally what you don't want to do is you generally don't, when you're doing buildings, I see this happen every so often. People will come by and they'll say, instead of drawing areas like we did on these two buildings, they'll come over here and they'll do points. And so they'll say, here's a building. And then they'll say, here's a building. And then they'll say, here's a building. And they'll identify buildings that way. We want to identify buildings by outlining their footprints because that gives a lot more information to people who consume this data than just marking buildings. And by the way, I didn't even tag any of these. So I would have to tag this. And I would say, mm, I don't even know how to tag my residential land use residential that's not right but I've seen people do it um, I can probably you know we talked about before I can come here and say I can select this node and I can say well they don't really give me a very good way to to edit the tags on this but I could say residential and then here it gives me all tags and I could just say building yes and I could just take this one off and see what happens I've so this is kind of a roundabout way to do it but I'm fairly sure I've seen people mark things that way too. building equals
is yes on a point. But I often see this house icon, so people must be must be marking these as residential. Land use equals residential, which is not really a tag you put on a point, you know. But I see people do this, but we're not going to do that because that's not the best way to do it. So I'm just going to get rid of these. If we were going to mark these, this task doesn't ask us to do buildings. But if we were going to mark these, we would do them the way that we did here, which is we would draw an area over them, and then we would say building equals yes. So I hope that helps a little bit with your tagging. It's, um, it's not the most intuitive thing, but what I really want you to notice is when we do an area, it's remembering ones you've done recently, when you see this stacked effect, that means that you're going to get additional options. And that's the most important thing, recognizing that it's showing you up at the top things you've recently used and that this here indicates there's options underneath this. And that, you know, once you do this, then you can deal with your all tags add additional tags, use these to add tags. You know, you can put a note on here. People, we put notes on stuff all the time. Note, you know, imagery was difficult to use because of clouds. And now, now you can see that has a note, you know, that has another tag key is note and the value is whatever it was I typed in there and this is not a good interface for reading it I guess it displays it here pretty well but we could put a note on this one if we wanted to one of these is the one of these is the note icon but I wanted you to get a sense and you know if you don't if you don't want that tag on there just hit the trash can get rid of it take that tag off but do make sure that you tag you know, I, I see it happen pretty often that people will draw an area and then that's it. They move on and they go find someplace else that they need to outline and they never actually take the second step and click on this and say this is a residential area. And you can see, let's see here. Yeah, you can see I can't move off here, but if you look to the left of where my cursor is area equals yes are all the tags that this has and that's why it's filled in so I don't see yeah it doesn't really it doesn't give until I give it other tags but area equals yes are the is area is the value is the key and yes is the value and I oftentimes see stuff where it's only tagged area equals yes which doesn't mean anything at all you know as soon as you draw a way, these are called ways, as soon as you close up a way, it's automatically an area. I don't really need a tag on it that says area equals yes. That's just for how it gets drawn. So if you don't actually say that this is land use equals residential, you know, I, you know it's great that it's been circled. Now all somebody has to do is put the right tag on it, but it's not very informative for the people who are trying to consume the data. Somebody's going to have to improve this, you know, come through and make a correction to it before it'll be very usable. So again, if you have any questions, you know, you can always ask me or you can always ask on the hot mailing list. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.